So is something like this even possible? I guess we'll find out. Our group decided to test the famous umbrella myth, where in this myth someone would jump from a high location with an umbrella and see if they can land safely. Now because of the similarities between an umbrella and a parachute, for some reason people think that they can replace one for the other. So umbrellas commonly catch a lot of wind during storms, which may have led people to think that they would work in freefall. But perhaps Mary Poppins might have influenced it as well. This myth has previously been attempted on an episode of Mythbusters. In their attempt of the myth, they tried similar parachute-like objects, like an umbrella and a sheet of firewood, using a test dummy with a stress sender inside. In their tests, the myth was disproven. This myth has also been attempted in popular culture. Hypothesis was that a standard umbrella would not work as an effective parachute for a person, but if its projective area was made large enough, it could work as a parachute. A standard umbrella would not produce a great enough drag force to counteract the force of gravity. The background science behind this myth is based around terminal velocity and the summation of forces. Essentially, for any form of parachute to be effective, the vertical drag force that it creates must be greater than the downward force exerted by the gravity. For the parachute to be safe, the resultant force must decrease the falling object's mass to a safe terminal velocity, which was determined to be roughly 5.4 second meters per second, where 5.4 meters per second is the velocity that skydivers aim to land at when making their landing. So basically what's happening is the mass with the parachute is dropping and it's dropping due to the force of gravity and eventually as it drops the force of drag increases so you can see right here the force of drag is still smaller in its vector form than the force of gravity and you can see where the force of drag is calculated over here is one half times the air density times the projected area times the drag coefficient times velocity squared so essentially as this mass falls, it's going to gain speed, and because of this velocity squared, the drag force is going to increase, and eventually the drag force is going to be equal to the force of gravity, and at that point, the mass is at terminal velocity. When it's at terminal velocity, it stops accelerating, so it'll be traveling at a constant velocity. So using, the, so using the equation to find the terminal velocity, we know that this is our target terminal velocity, 5.36 meters per second. This is the velocity that most parachutes uh, aim for. And so knowing this, we need to find our area. And so by solving this, we get this ratio, where if you know your mass, then you can find the area. So for our small scale model, the mass of our toy soldier was 0 0.011 kilograms and when we plug this into there we get an area that equals 0 0.00531 meters squared. Now because this is a circle, an area of a circle is pi r squared, so using this we find the radius to equal 4.11 centimeters meaning that our diameter equals 
0.23 centimeters. So this is how wide our umbrella has to be for our small scale model. According to our calculation, uh, a toy soldier of this size should compare with why are you narrating? <laughs> <laughs> it might not be a bad idea though, so that when you're looking uh, at the editing and stuff, you can kind of umbrella like this, this big. Oh, nice. So this is our small scale model. In the end. Okay, so using this equation right here, we can find the acceleration to be negative 2.57 meters per second squared. This is your, obviously your mass, these two, your acceleration, your gravity, drag coefficient, and velocity. So this velocity is terminal velocity, specifically. And so using that, we plug in what we know for our kinematics, and using one of the kinematics equation, with these known variables, we can find time to be 2 point zero nine seconds. Now with this time we can find our required height to reach our terminal velocity which is y1 equals 5.59 meters. This height right here is the required height for the object to reach the terminal velocity we wanted which is 5.36 meters per second. Yeah. Okay, so the mass that we decided to use uh, are two water bottles, and their combined mass is 0.996 kilograms, which is about two pounds. So using this ratio, we found in the when calculating the small scale model we find that our required area is 0 0.603 meters squared and from this again we use area equals pi r squared we get our radius to be 0 0.44 meters with a diameter of 0 0.88 meters so this is the shape of our umbrella with the diameter and the radius and now in order to maintain this dome shape, we have to divide our circle into eight sections. So first we need to find the circumference, which is 2 pi r, and that turned out to be 2.76 meters. And when divided into eight sections, you get 0 0.35 meters for each section. So now doing that, you get this kind of shape with 0 0.35 down here and then to find this arc length right here it's just going to be a quarter of your circumference so it's 0 0.691 meters you can stand under my umbrella you can stand under my umbrella things will never come in between you're part of my entity here for infinity when the war has taken its part when the world has dealt its cards if the hand is hard together we'll mend your heart because when the sunshine will shine together told you i'll be here forever said i'll always Get out to the end Now that it's raining more than ever Know that we'll still have each other You can stand under my umbrella You can stand under my umbrella Ella, Ella, A, A, 
this is our full scale model in the end. It was made of some kind of plastic and you can see all the wire and the wood stick in the middle of it as the framework of the whole model and we are testing it with these two water bottles as the weight. The calculation of our experiment was that, as hypothesized, a standard umbrella would be unable to stay still slow down the descent of a falling umbrella. However, the formula used to calculate parachute dimensions was proved to be accurate, and it was shown that if scaled appropriately, an umbrella with an enormous surface, surface area could help an individual to safety land. So again, our target velocity was 5.36 meters for the terminal, and we ended up getting 6.5 meters per second. And now some possible errors to that is because uh, at the end in the video that you saw, you see that the umbrella flipped due to the circulation of the air. And also during the day we were testing, wind was also a big issue, but we could have also had some calculation errors, construction slash measurement errors, or maybe even timing issues not being in sync. And again, for comparison's sakes, the average velocity with an umbrella was 4.68 meters per second, and dropping the two water bottles by themselves, it was 8.06 meters per second. And just for a fun fact, we decided to let you guys know how big the umbrella has to be for the average American, which is 196 pounds. The diameter has to be 7.39 meters or 24.25 feet.